we're here. Good evening, New Bedford and New Bedford Guide South Coast residents. Chris Resendi's back for the Chris Resendi Show episode. I don't know, I'm getting on a year almost. What do you think, Manny? Getting up there, man. I, gotta, up there. I, I didn't realize it was only a year. Yeah, yeah, about. You know, we're getting there. And uh, Manny, as you know, DeBerto's back, my guy, co host. <laughs> Prodigal son returns. Ins inspiration of my first logo. Uh, He's back to talk uh, about the election, some other good stuff that we got into a little bit the last time we discussed the uh, polling station changes. And we also have uh, Will and Taylor here from Alma Del Mar Charter School. Uh, the charter school is looking to expand, and a lot of people have questions about charter schools. And we're going to you know, dive into this rabbit hole of charter schools in the state of Massachusetts. And uh, we're also going to touch upon some of the uh, pros and what some consider cons, and you know, they seem pretty well versed. Our guest Taylor here is a fine singer, and she says she's gonna <laughs> just uh, start singing if I get her angry. So. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> and then I'm a little intimidated. Usually I'm the guy with the electronics, and I get guys like Manny that just kind of like me wing it and just come from the heart. Right. These guys came with uh, charts and notes and everything else, so we're gonna go into it. And I kind of <laughs> challenged them before the show, so there may be something different here that we normally don't see little back and forth which will be healthy and fun and we're gonna walk away smiling and shaking hands and I hope there is a disagreement because generally you learn from a disagreement uh, and I'm here to learn and I'm here to teach not teach but open up your eyes to different topics that we have in our community first off Manny how are you bud how you doing Chris good to be back man how'd you make out this uh, primaries on Tuesday uh, my first state election so just uh Again, just a learning process, like you said, just learning, going through. Um, you know, it's a little bit of a disconnect because you know the, the state is handled by the state, so you know I don't get a chance to really know the candidates as well. Um, they're not in and out of my office. You know, I have nothing to do with the setting up of the ballot or anything like that. So you know, it's just, as far as the election goes and who is running and you know who they are, I, I was just a little bit isolated from that. So it was it was kind of a new. Um, new thing. New thing less for Less hands-on. Way less ha hands-on. But as far as, you know, managing the election, uh, it's just so challenging. It really, really is. Um, this was the first election where I didn't have um, Maria Tamazia as a consultant. So we, we were flying so right hand, huh? She was last year. So she's been gone since uh, last um, election for the uh, local. And, you know, it, it really is. It's, it's a lot of people... I mean, we have 36 precincts, 27, you know, uh, polling locations, 300 poll workers, another 50 police officers, you know, dealing with housing, traffic, you know, DFFM, DPI, and to get everyone on the same page, it's just really, really challenging. Um, but I, th I think we did a good job, and we, and we really do. You know, things are always going to come up, but um, my staff is excellent. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of safeguards in place to make sure that things run smoothly. So uh, I'm pretty happy, you know. Um, and the turnout was a lot higher than the last state we election. Yeah, 11 and a half. It's 11 and a half. And um, from my research, I think the last one was only like three and a half. I mean, I didn't, I wasn't here, so I didn't do the numbers. So, you know, is how accurate that is, I don't know. Um, but that's what I've, you know, taken from the reports that I looked at. Excellent. So I'm thinking um, we're going to be busy this uh this November. I think so. I think there's a lot so. of people that actually have a, I'm not going to say more informed, but they want to participate more. I think there's actually a lot of misinformed voting yeah. people that want to really participate yeah. this time. And we're going to go over a lot of that stuff over exactly. the next couple of weeks. You'll probably be back on before the election. So anytime we'll discuss some of the stuff. I want to go back and forth like over the next couple of months and really talk about some issues. Really. Sure try to have some uncomfortable conversations with people and hopefully have some interaction from the uh, guests so that way we could, uh, you know, get different perspectives out there. You know, I really, I would love to have, like, Barry Richard over there and, you know, some guy, like... Yeah, he might not want to sit Will, next who to may me, not but... agree with, you know, <laughs> and not necessarily Barry, but the type, I'm, I'm you joking. know, the type that really... I'll talk to anyone, you know that. ...tends to trigger people and show an opposite side and, a, you know, a view that 
some people may not understand. So I'm going to be looking to do that. And it may be like an off-cycle show. I might do it from remotely so that way nobody fights in the studio. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I'll get a guy in his, in his study and another guy in his office remotely so they can't swing at each other in the middle of the show. Nice. But it's something I want to do. How would the uh, new polling locations Chris work out for you? Yeah, it will be. Will. Yeah. I'll tell you what. <laughs> We're going to practice tonight, and I promise I'll keep my hands in my lap. Only if you do. I don't trust you, man. Civil You're the wiry type. Man. You're pretty quick, I bet. <laughs> Next on Chris Fire. <laughs> um, polling locations, I mean, it's, it's, it's a learning process with everything. You know, Alma actually ended up um, housing a double precinct for us yeah. uh, from Senor de Padra. It's just a learning process, again, and just knowing the layout, um, getting to know the schedule and, and where it's at, notifying people, letting them know. Um, we've had, you know, we, we do mailings and I'm on with you and BSM and standard times and press releases. And still some people, you know, might not get that message that we've moved. So, I mean, we do um, everything that we can to kind of get that message out there. Um, I'm sure we're going to get feedback. I'm going to touch base with, with Will actually tomorrow just to get some feedback on how it was, how to process, were we really disruptive um, to the students because, you know, obviously that's the most important thing, yeah. safety of the kids and, you know, making sure that we're in the right location. And, and you It know, is tough because... It's so tough. The whole thing with uh, voting and children, I've always been kind of skeeved out about using schools for yeah. polling locations. Yeah. Because you cannot, from what I understand, you cannot stop no matter a sex offender from voting, can you? How does that work? I don't think so. I don't even, that's the first I'm even hearing that. And what, what we did there, I tried to have an extra police officer on site um, to kind of, you know, make sure that people are going yep. and voting and, and leaving. Yeah. Um, normally we have one police officer, so I, I wanted to have two um, just so we can kind of control that. Uh, I think in November, I know New Bedford Public Schools don't have school. I'm not sure really yeah. about um, Alma's schedule, but you know that makes sense. But sadly, we don't have many locations that are up to code, are handicap accessible, that offer all these things are big enough in that people want us. Yeah. So most of our best infrastructure in urban areas are the schools. Are the schools. So we're really limited. And then there's a lot of rules and laws behind, you know, where you can go and, and you know. Absolutely. You have, you have to, to have certain, certain criteria so to meet in order to qualify. It, as yeah, a it's, so it's not as easy as saying let's yeah. just move out of a location. Now, Taylor right. here uh, greets the children every morning, I, do. I was told. Were yes. you greeting the voters that day? Uh, they came in the back door, so I didn't get to. Oh, you didn't get to. Yeah. She's got such a scholars. warming smile. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You know, That's even right. If, sometimes you drag your feet into and hold yeah. your nose when you go into uh, check yeah. off the uh, the guy or the girl that you're looking to vote for. Yeah, right. And uh, you know, <laughs> I know the last election in November, the big one. I kind of held my nose when I when I pulled the lever, and maybe seeing Taylor. Make me uh, <laughs> ease it a little bit. It. She's got this calming right. demeanor about her. <laughs> Taylor, and then plus yeah. a, a bunch of really cute scholars. Um, you know, we had our kindergarten scholars right there watching the Oh, voters. did you? Yeah, I'm oh, watching yeah. the process. Excellent. Yeah, and, and that was really, I, I think, that, you know, you talked about some of the, the potential drawbacks, which we didn't see, because I thought, you know, to, to give you some feedback, I thought your volunteers did an awesome yeah. job, and, and, and the police officers who were there did great as well. Um, and it was cordoned off enough that it was safe, but I thought the real benefit was that scholars got to see voting in action, see the process. Normally we take them yeah. to the polls, um, but it was really cool to have it right I love the, the fact that you're calling the kids scholars. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's part, that's the part of the mission. The Law of Attraction is the book I just finished reading. I'm sure yep. you've read it. And uh, it's uh, the whole positive vibe, and it's that's working. Right. I like it. Good. Yeah, I like it a lot. Uh, so you're good. The schools went well. I got one comment from, uh, I can't pronounce it. I butcher his name and I apologize. He said that Alma was a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> now, Craig Padinsky, I'm sorry, Craig, I'm sorry. He said Alma was oh, terrible. Yeah. Now, he's so, a guy yeah. who's kind of vocal in the community. Yeah. He so, it sounds around. like he had a bad day. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. I mean, yeah. what were the, any complaints? What a, disa what a disaster is, I don't know what, he's, yeah. what he means, but I, didn't I mean, see anybody we, um, Again, we had a quick turnaround. We had a, a motion filed where we had to find a new location. Right. The state was involved. Right. Um, we had to leave Senor de Padra, and you know we had to be up to code, and you know, really didn't have much time. So thankfully, Alma stepped up. Stepped up, welcomed us. Um, I had asked for a couple of things that 
you know, like I said, I have to rely on over 400 people to get things done. Um, we had asked for extra parking in the street for handicap. I know there's um, a couple of spots in, in the back of the building, but mm -hmm. I don't know if they're for yeah, teacher use. Yeah. So there's three. I asked for a couple on the street. Those weren't there. I had purchased some signs, vote here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it's a new location, that wasn't delivered, and I do a visit at every polling location, and I didn't get a message. No one called. Hey, the no sign's one. not out here. So, so this is the first you're hearing. Yeah. So we had to. Is. We had to. Yeah. yeah no. Maybe yeah. you can elaborate. Yeah. yeah so first time. you know, and again, it's it was the first time, and we did it before the primary, so we have time to mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. fix those yeah. issues or whatever. I mean, he could have called my office and spoke to me directly, or you know, I have mm. you know, I have an open door policy, and I've actually spoken to Craig on numerous topics, and you know, him and his buddy Carlos Felix, you know, they always have something to say. They email me. I have Carlos I, had such a great I, video for yeah, me last week. It was yeah. awesome. Thanks, Carlos. So, I, you know, I don't, I don't I mean, mind. I mean, what's a real disaster? Have you seen? A, have you seen a disaster? I mean, and anything could happen. I mean, we had, we had. One location, and, and someone brought it to my attention, and it wasn't open on time. And you know, yeah, you don't want stuff like we, that. We, we, yeah. we, we send letters to all the locations, mm -hmm. we email, we call, we remind people they have to be there. But sadly to say, you know, we have people show up at 5 30. We had someone at almost show up at 5 30 so we can deliver booths and voting right. machines and everything, and we could set up on time to I be ready. I said booths. I'm like, whoa, what's going on booths. at these voting <laughs> things? Booths. Booths. Um, lines in the gutter. Yeah. Right. Um, but, you know, and then that gives us a little lag time. If something right. happens, then, you know, we can get on it. So if, if someone doesn't open the building on time and, and everything is there, but there's no one there to let you in, what do you do? I don't have keys to every building in the mm. city. You know, like I said, yeah, we absolutely. have 27. So, you know, when things like that happen, it, 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 it's sad. I don't want them to happen, and we do our best to have them not happen. It's your Super Bowl happen. every time. You know what I mean? You play so, for the big game, and to get it all, and all of a sudden, yeah. time, five minutes, feels like 30 seconds. Exactly. I get it. Man, you know? and, and everybody yeah. has, you know, their own opinion on things, but again, they don't know all the work that goes behind the scenes Absolutely. and all the other things that I'm looking at. I'm not just looking at just the location. I'm looking at you know, the law behind it, you know, like I, I can't move a polling location to somewhere that's not an adjacent precinct. So if there's not another mm. building within that wooden precinct, gotta, I can't do it. I have to file, have legislation filed yeah. at the state level. So people don't know that. Yeah. It's, it's not as easy as saying, oh, just find, take it out of every school and it's find the best It's super easy location. to come up with an opinion. Yeah. It's oh, super no easy, doubt. but to do the work to actually make <laughs> no it change. Yeah. Speaking of guys with opinions, he's an awesome guy, and he's commented on both of you, uh, Christian. Farland, yep. a good friend of mine. Hey, Chris. And awesome right. guy. Yeah, yeah. Says, uh, Manny, great job. And uh, Will, uh, New Bedford needs more people like you to improve the, their program in education. Appreciate so, it, Christian. And it comes from Christian. Yeah. Uh, it's a guy that I lean on for a lot. Uh, take it as, a, as not only a compliment, but uh, a strong uh, yeah. endorsement. Is the real word real leader for. in the community. Business Absolutely. Leader, Absolutely. Entrepreneur. Yeah. I love doing stuff with him. Um, yep. I'm meeting with him Tuesday. We talked about my next project after cuts for kids and uh i'll be bothering him on tuesday for lunch perfect yeah. perfect <laughs> i'm sure he doesn't mind he only has <laughs> oktoberfest to deal with uh, uh mini you just uh we went over it last time uh you actually you want to know what i want to bring this up disaster will you mentioned uh, what is an election disaster an election disaster yeah. is when a former president of the united states walks in and breaks every campaign rule at the buttonwood park and walks right up to the voting mm. booths when he's supposed to stay 100 feet away and then the mm. mayor Joining in and clapping in, all why mm. opposite supporters are hushed mm -hmm. away mm -hmm. until they can't do it. That's a, that's a disaster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar with that incident. See, I wasn't there. I wasn't here for that. No, you weren't. But I've, I've done a little research on that, and there's other things again behind the scenes that happen. So it looks one way, and you know, there's always two Let's sides. Let's put it out there. Yeah. No, I mean, I don't know the exact oh, right. details, but I'd love you know, to hear I, them I, I think a lot of it had to do with security purposes, stuff like that. There was a, there was a lot of things behind the scenes that happened, and. I, my position, we answer the Secretary of State. So if he yeah. signs off on something or whatever, I mean, I don't know if that's the case. I don't think he signed off on it from what I was told. I, I'm, not, I'm not 100% sure, yeah. but that is, um, What's you that? know. Secretary Galvin texting you, telling me to be quiet? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. I don't think he has my direct line, but. <laughs> I'm sure he's surprised, man. You'd be surprised. I'm sure. <laughs> so, Will, you did it. Uh, you did the uh, new spot. Uh, yeah. Two reasons why you did it. What made you say, you know what, we're going to open up our yeah. doors to this polling stage? Because it, uh, yeah, I mean, it is a major decision. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, two, two reasons. Uh, uh, three reasons. Perfect. One, 
Manicol, right? You, you got to say yes. Every single time. Yep. <laughs> Two, I say yes. Uh, you know, our mission is that our scholars will become service-minded leaders. Uh, we got to walk the walk, right? We got to show our scholars that, that we're those kinds of leaders as well. And so what could be more important than the work of democracy? Uh, you know, your volunteers who were there, you know, I talked to one woman, she'd been doing it for 30 years. Yeah, they love it. Every year doing that work. Um, that's who tells Manny what to do. And, you, you know, know and right? that's, the that's volunteers the, at these stations that have been doing this work. Yeah, but that's the boring but super important work of Absolutely. democracy, right? Uh, so I think you know it's important that that we contribute if if we can. It's the ultimate uh, civic duty as, an as an American. Yeah, and then I think thirdly, you know, it was great for our scholars to just have a front row seat to that process, right? And we were able to explain to them, you know, in anticipation of it, and for them to be able to kind of look down from the balcony uh, to see where people were voting. Uh, really, really cool experience. Excellent. Now, uh, yeah. were you confused by the colors on the ballots this year? The red no. and the blue, <laughs> I, I've been reading a lot about that online. I actually overheard um, a couple of the volunteers being like, so which party is which color? Yeah. And it was like, I don't know, seven. I was like, I hope they worked that out. <laughs> I'm not in charge. I was so. like, who cares? But everybody's been talking about it online. It was, it was a conspiracy theory. Yeah. There's something behind the red being yeah. Democrat and the blue being Republican. Well, I'm what's like, no, they're really probably what? They're so, not a standardized design, right? No, so it's, no. it's like state by state. No. Or, yeah. And so you can yeah. get these kind of quirky designs. Yeah. Yeah. So the state, the state, Prints out the ballot and yeah. they deliver it to us and whatever oh, color it is. It is. To do with you. Yeah, and then I'm and then about, this is a lighthearted. Oh, I hear, I hear <laughs> the I hear the conspiracy theories all the time. <laughs> but then you know, so yeah, the colors were opposite as the traditional parties, but printed in bold letters mm -hmm. was Democratic Party, Republican Party, Libertarian, right. and you just get your ballot according to what you're registered as, mm -hmm. what your affiliation is. So um, that really the the big thing. I mean, you don't. Pick by color, you know, you're registered as whatever. Unenrolled, you have to declare which mm -hmm. ballot you wanted. Yeah, that's what I um, did. And then, you know, you tell the, the worker when you check in and they hand you the, the correct ballot. So, um, yeah, there's definitely no conspiracy theory, at least locally. I mean, mm -hmm. and from what I hear, they're always that color. Oh, I just, it, I, I heard, I, I this, heard. That was a non issue. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I heard. No, you but you'd you be, so, you be surprised. You some of these things, some, 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 some of these things, some of these things, some of these things, some of these some of these things, there was a, a there was someone emailed the mayor oh, about it. About the color of the ballot. About the color of the ballot. See, I told you. I didn't so things, things, yeah, things have legs and. They, you know, the words they use in their email, dismayed and what a, you know, a again, the disaster and all these things. Disaster. And it's like the color was whatever it was. The color really doesn't matter. You know what? Last season I didn't do this. And I'm going to totally just stop the show in its tracks and make sure, sure that I start this season because I'm actually going to put up every week an update. Tonight's football game, Thursday night football. My awesome. show is on Thursdays. And every year, every game last year, and I'm like, you've got to start asking the guests for scores. And we're going to keep Chris versus the guests That's on the spread. That's awesome. <laughs> Tonight, now it's you three against me. <laughs> yeah. Atlanta, Philadelphia. Super Ooh. Bowl champions versus someone they knocked off in the playoffs, NFC Championship. Yeah, yeah. Minus home? this time quarterback. Philly's at home, but Atlanta's given up one point tonight. So fa Atlanta's favored by one. Who are you taking? Atlanta and Philly's at home? I don't have any skin in this game. <laughs> Neither do I. I wouldn't be doing a show right now if I had any skin in the game. Just take a pick. Atlanta or Philadelphia. Which one do you think is your favorite city? Um, nice airport or the, oh or the brotherly love? Which one is it going to be? I don't know. I've been to both recently, and I had a great Excellent. time in both places. Have um, you really? Yeah. Yeah. They were great. You know what? My friend uh, Olivia just had a baby in Atlanta, so I'm going to pick Atlanta. All right. Will. I have to go with Atlanta. I'm just the heat. It's it's hot Atlanta. I just I'm feeling the heat right now. All right. Yeah. I'm going Philly. All right. I'll, you got the green behind you. I'm going yeah. Philly. <laughs> I'm gonna have to agree with them. Oh, oh going out on a limb, yeah, man. Election <laughs> commissioner. I can't go with with a backup quarterback who's been terrible. Yeah. They beat the Patriots, yeah. which is what yeah. kills me. Yeah. Oh, I'm a Patriots fan, right. but yeah. still. Right. Now back to uh, non ADD world. We're gonna learn tonight. Uh, Man, we're going to touch upon some of the, we're going to wrap back into A's before J's and all sure. that stuff nice. towards the middle of the show. But I want, to, I want to really start touching upon the charter school stuff as well. Yeah. Or else Taylor's going to start singing. I'm here for a reason. <laughs> uh, charter schools. Quick synopsis of what a charter school is and the difference 
between a charter school and a public school? Great yeah. question. First of all, you know, I, I, we, I just want us to repeat it as a mantra. Charter schools are public schools. Charter schools are public schools. Say it with me. Charter they are. schools are public schools. All right. They're funded as public schools. <laughs> they are, they're, but, they are by law. They are yeah. public schools. So, uh, and, and the deal with charter schools, you know, in, in Massachusetts, um, charter schools are, uh, it's basically a, a deal with the state to say, uh, as an entity, as a school, uh, we'll give you more autonomy, right? So more freedom over your curriculum, length of the school day, school year, um, the, the freedom to do what you need to do for kids. Uh, and that takes many, many forms, right, in terms of what people do with it, in exchange for higher accountability, right? So every year, the state's checking in on us. Are we meeting the targets that they've set for us? Uh, are we accomplishing the goals that we've set out for ourselves? Uh, and are we being true to our charter? And uh, if we are, then great, and, and there's best practices that we can share. If we aren't, then we're sanctioned. If we're bad, we're shut down. And that's the deal, right? Uh, so that's the basic deal of what a charter school is. It's Excellent. A publicly funded school through the, by the state. Uh, we're chartered directly by the state. It's a competitive process to get a charter. So uh, when we founded Alma uh, back in 2011, we were one of over a hundred applications statewide to open a charter school. We were one of three applications in New Bedford at the time. Uh, and there were about 15 schools that were chartered that year. So it's, it was a highly competitive process. Uh, Multi-step takes over a year. Uh, and I think that's one of the things that makes Massachusetts charter sector so strong is that there's a really high barrier to entry, right? It's really, you know, there's other states where they're giving out charters to anybody who asks for them, and, yeah. and, you know, I'm being glib there. Uh, and then I think the other thing in Massachusetts is there's high accountability. So uh, the state is, is not afraid to close down charters that aren't performing. Uh, and How often does that happen? You know, it it's happens, uh, it's not frequent, but I can think of, you know, a few in the past couple of years. I can, I can think of two or three. No. Uh, and it's, it's either academic performance or, or, you know, they're just not, not cutting it. Yeah. And, um, and so as a charter community, uh, statewide, we, we actually applaud that, right? Because we want to make sure that all public schools for kids are great schools and charters are a part of that effort. We want to make sure that all, all schools are good schools. Now, Taylor, I'm going to make you play contrarian and fight against charter schools. <laughs> didn't see that coming. Yeah. yeah. What is your number one thing, like if you were to sit here and say, charter schools are good, Charter schools are bad. Mm -hmm. Being from the inside, I, this is why I ask you because you don't, you have this nice, glowing, honest look to you, <laughs> so warm. I know you won't hurt me for putting you on the spot. Uh, what's the con of a, of a? There has to be something. So, mm -hmm. what, what would you say is is the con of a charter school? I think that's a really good question. And when I entered into uh, the teacher training program that I did. Um, it was called Match Teacher Residency at the time. Now it's called the Charles, Charles Spazzato Graduate School of Education in Jamaica Plain. I had every intention of completing the program and then going to teach in a district school. Um, I volunteered in a district school um, in Middletown. Bill and I actually, we went to the same college, so that's kind of funny. Um, Excellent. Yes, Excellent. but, yes, go west. Um, but I think if I had to say, after being on the inside of a charter school for a few years, a drawback is there, we have a hard time collaborating with schools that are a part of the district because of kind of the political nature of being a charter school and kind of the opposition that happens sometimes when you're talking about what a charter school brings to the community and what that does or doesn't take away from what the district school is trying to offer. Um, so I know we have worked really hard to collaborate with the district, um, especially as of late. Uh, we have some fun PDs that lots of people are invited to. Yeah. We'll play laser tag or, you know, we'll open up our uh, professional development sessions to kind of share some best practices. Um, and we also send our eighth grade scholars to New Bedford High, um, the scholars who qualify to be in their uh, dual enrollment math program. So That was kind of controversial to some. Yes, I remember yes. Asking, yeah, right, uh, right. Somebody was really... At Gosh, my memory's yeah. fried right now. As, as I was telling them before the show, mm -hmm. I had a rough day. Mm -hmm. I gotta go home and work on it after the show. So right. excuse me if I can't remember the exact episode, but uh, somebody was saying that they didn't like, I think it was the school yeah. committee wasn't happy with the mayor for kind of mm -hmm. pushing that dual enrollment. 
Yeah. It was kind of yeah. like a... There, there someone were, described it as a... Refresh there, my memory. There were some, some members like who had questions. Yeah, there were mm-hmm. some members who had questions about it because, again, the, you know, I think the, the larger political thing, and, and people like to blow this stuff up, uh, you know, a little out of proportion, but, you know, for, for some, because of the political stuff around charters statewide or nationally, they felt like, hey, what are we letting these charter school kids uh, participate in this, in this program for? When in reality, you know, these are New Bedford kids, uh, and it's a, it was actually part of an effort, you know, to, to collaborate and, and share ideas, share best practices, and, and ultimately is part of a larger effort, right, to continue to improve New Bedford High and to, and to show it as a school of choice for, for parents here in New Bedford. We well, got people that, are, you know, by, here's the plus of this yeah. that I see. You get kids that are actually going into Bedford High and opening up their eyes and saying, "Oh, I'm, I kind of like this." Mm-hmm. There you go. Mm-hmm. That's Rather than about. not giving it a chance hey, and saying, "I'm going to stay," it's I'm not going, that scary I'm place to vote. Like, I'm out. You know, there you I mean, go. I, but you that's right. I mean, That's you right. know, Manny does this uh, new program. Why don't we talk about like what yeah. you're, what oh, you're the, put uh, the uh, also we have the um, Compass Youth uh, Lunch Program, and actually mm-hmm. there was an article um, in the Standard Times recently about it. Um, one of my uh, he actually did his work study for his college with me. He's one of our first A's before J's scholarship winners. Mm-hmm. And the idea is to have high school students go and have lunch once a month with middle schoolers. Mm. And the idea um, that was floated was every high school in the area go and have representatives at the middle schools at every middle school. Um, that's not how it all panned out. but Because of? This, we'll not get yeah. into that. But, you know, <laughs> like for, for me, as a, as a youth advocate, again, that's what I'm, lo- I'm looking at, the benefit for the entire community. I'm worried about all the kids. Mm-hmm. The kids are going to decide to go to New Bedford, Stang, Volk, wh- wherever, right. and they should get a chance to see the students they're going to be around. And, and it is a good opportunity for those that's schools right. to sell themselves. That's right at the level where the kids are at, meeting them at lunch. It's a comfortable, they're not you know, in the classroom, it's not a teacher, it's mm-hmm. not a parent, mm-hmm. it's not us mm-hmm. on Facebook Live right mm-hmm. now, it's actually kids that they're looking up to um, that are standouts in their school because to be honest, you know, the varsity athletes or the honor society, they have to have maintained a certain grade point average and they have to act a certain way to be an athlete. So, mm-hmm. you know, and they're right. easy to, to, to pick out. And like I said, they're following them in the newspaper or whatever, they look up to these kids anyway. So the idea is to just get them to their level. So, you know, I think that's a great idea because, you know, not every kid fits every school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my brother is the head football coach at New Bedford High School. I went to Stang, my son went to Stang. I have a five-year-old, he might not go to Stang, he might go to New Bedford because every- my buddies just now talked about that. Every every child is different, different. their needs are different, the family's different. I've had kids that their parents say, what do you think's a good fit for my child? And I'll say this school, whether it's Stang or Volk or whatever. And I've had other parents and I know their child, I'll say New Bedford. And it depends really on the child and the situation. And so you it's and I, um, you and very I definitely important. talked about that in the past. Yeah. So important. My friend Joey, uh, Joey Wintall, his daughter goes to a private school and his son goes to a public school. Mm-hmm. Sure. Mm-hmm. And it works for her, he says. That's right. Exactly. And we don't know. It may work for his son in the future, but right yeah. now, that's what works. It's not in the plan. We're yeah. going to see yeah. how it works. Yeah individually right yeah. and as a parent child. you know you know as a parent you can make that decision and, and you know you're gonna know what's right for each kid so yeah. I'm in New Bedford yep and I'm, I'm not in New Bedford the fake Chris is in New Bedford okay and his child uh, wants to go to your right. school okay ready here we'll go through the process yeah that's okay people, I'll take you know, through I'm reading the comments ready? here we go lotteries or you know they take the best okay. and I'm trying to yeah. how much how much time we got here okay. oh, we got, we got, all right we gotta hit some topics all right Plus, so here's, here's, here's the process Manny's got a lot ready? to say yeah. and Josh said oh. eight o'clock lock okay. it down here's, here's the process for getting into Alma Del Mar you ready yeah what's your child's name yeah okay uh, put it down you know just write it down uh what's your address write, write it down. down okay we're done Excellent, Josh. More <laughs> questions. That's it. Man. You're out of here. Definitely. Unless Manny gets going. Uh, or else no, I start talking so, about football or something. You know, it's a blind lottery, right? Totally um, blind lottery. And so it's, it's, you, you put your name and address down on a piece of paper. Uh, you know, each year uh, we get more and more applications. So this past year uh, we had over 500 applications. Now we don't have that many spots, obviously, so the lottery can be really heartbreaking. Um, and the only preference in the lottery is for siblings of current scholars. 
there's no preference for my own kids. Absolutely, my own kids don't know, get any preference. So no teachers, no teachers. teachers no. Yep, we had uh, we had one teacher's that, like, kid kids get in into Dharma, the lottery. Like if yeah. the, t- the Still parents do. taught in Dharma, Still do. they could get their kids to go to Dharma school. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, but uh, but that. there's no preference in in uh, Massachusetts charters uh, for faculty kids. Uh, so it's a blind lottery. We take kids from all over the city. Now, uh, one of the things that we have to do though, in order to make sure. That, that the kids in that lottery are really representative and that we're really serving the population that, that, that we set out to serve, which is you know, people who might not have access to a high quality school if they don't have this opportunity. What we do is we make sure we're getting out, we're getting those applications into the hands uh, of people who might so not otherwise you have an outreach aspect We do of a ton school. of outreach. So even you know, when we were first going to start Alma, so back in 2011, uh, we had a group of just really kind of energized uh, parents about this called the Moms Brigade. We were going door to door in the projects, just telling people about you know this idea for the school and just handing out those one pages, name and address. Um, you know, people in all all sorts of uh, states they would dance to the door, um, but they'd welcome us in and and uh, talk about their hopes and dreams for their kids. And you know, and that's how the thing started. And to date, we still do a ton of outreach like that to make sure that we're hitting uh, families that don't speak English, right? So we're, we're advertising only in Spanish and Portuguese at this point. We don't do any kind of like online advertising. We're not putting billboards up. And the reason we don't do that is, well, first of all, we don't need to because there's so much demand. And second of all, we want to make sure that that pool that we're drawing from on the lottery uh, is really representative of, of the population that, that, we, uh, you know, that we were chartered to serve. Excellent. Now, your, your facility, I, I'm sorry, I was yeah. full intentions on visiting. Yeah. Do you Still have, time. Come on by. We've got a whole school year. Absolutely. No, <laughs> yeah, we're only, in, in, we're only in week three. The reason now. why I'm asking is because I tell everybody, uh, you've got a beautiful new facility from the right. outside, modern. It yeah. Looks like, you know, and I tell people all the time, Manny and I have had this discussion, that you know, at night when the lights go out, there's nowhere for the kids to go. Yeah. Is there any plans to do any night stuff for kids that's a great idea in you your, know in your school i mean it would we're talking right. about outreach what more outreach is they didn't have some caring faculty taking in non-students and showing them hey this is what we have here right right well you know as far as the faculty they're already working 10 11 12 hour days yeah um and we have done a, a lot in the past you know in the past we've, we've offered um more for the community, for, for families. So we've had English language classes that we've offered in partnership with the city. Uh, we do after, uh, offer free after school for our scholars. You should talk have, to Helena about, from the oh Innovation yeah, Center. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, IAC was a big part of, uh, of our founding as well. Uh, and, uh, you know, and then we have things like, uh, we do have a teacher who teaches Zumba uh, every week at the school. We have folks in the community come so in So there is, there is... Yeah, it's a hub. More of, it's, yeah. it's a neighborhood. It, it is. You know, you get it people... Is. Awesome. Right. And we're and we open so up. Our, uh, we have a playing field uh, that, that we open up. We don't close it off to the public. You know, the neighborhood gets gets use of that. And we and we have a playground as well. Um, and it's nice. You know, we've From got the tournament there. Uh, yeah, we've got. Um, Manny's wheels. <laughs> we don't have. We don't have <laughs> you see it. No. <laughs> Manny has like. Yeah. Like, I tell Manny all the time. Yeah, yeah. This is a guy. He he's a he's an idea man. <laughs> he really truly is. Yeah. He's an idea guy. Oh, yeah. But he needs someone to put a saddle on him. Mm. And hold right on there, minute. guy. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to this watering hole first. You, right, know what I mean? you right. sip right by that one. You're going to the next one. Let's go. <laughs> that's good. And it's excellent yeah. having you know yeah, a really good neighbor. That. And yeah. that's what you guys sound like you're trying to do. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So and and you know the the story of the building really is um you know, one of the things about charter schools is is that we don't get capital funds in the same way that you know a, a district school you want to build a building you have access to state. Uh, mass school building authority money. We don't have access to those. Where do funds. you get the money to build that? We're huge on building. our own. So uh, we, you know, what we did was we ended up uh, through through again through the partnership of the city and, and we worked with the city council and the mayor. Um, we purchased that piece of property where the old Ottawell school was, and we'd been renting that property for a while. Um, and we took what was a vacant lot, you know, a place where every morning we were having to go out and just you know clean up bad stuff that we didn't want our kids to interact with. Um, we took that vacant lot and we redeveloped it. We turned it into a beautiful school. Uh, and how we did that? Well, we had to raise funds. So we raised a lot of federal funds uh, through a new market tax credit program. Uh, we worked with mass development and financed tax exempt bonds. Uh, and then we did a lot of, a lot of fundraising. Uh, and we, you know, we created in less than a year 
a beautiful facility. It's nothing fancy. There's no bells and whistles, uh, but it's a beautiful facility, and I think it's really worthy of the work that our scholars and our teachers do. And I think it's a symbol of, you know, the pride uh, that that our um, community should be showing in a school. Uh, and we did it for 17 million dollars, and it's the, the capacity is 450 kids. Um, so I, I think we did a, a really good job, and, and we had a great uh, general contractor and architect as well. Excellent. Yeah. One question that I had is every year yeah. you start off with X amount of students. What's yeah. the retention rate in yeah. your schools? How many yeah. per thousand, how many kids normally in your school? You said 400 So something? now we have uh, 438, I think. Yeah. Generally, what do you lose per year? Yes, yeah, so we, we tend to uh, lose uh, around 5%. Usually it's less. Most years it's less than 5%. Uh, so you're talking 20 kids. Yeah, something like that, you know, and I think a typical uh, district school, a, you know, typical public school in this area, you're going to be around 8% every yeah. year. So uh, our Not attrition total drop to loss, but these 20 kids, 20 is a magic number, 5% yeah. of roughly 400. Well, and, you know, um, given the population we serve, you know, we have families who uh, will disappear, unfortunately disappear in the middle of the night. You know, they have to move and they have to move quickly. Uh, so that's often the story and it's heartbreaking. You invest a lot. So these kids aren't just getting family. dumped back into the public schools is my question. Uh, no. Uh, I think that's what some of the complaints that I got when I did a little research. Right, that, right. You yeah, know, these guys are keeping the good ones right. and they're dumping yeah. the non-performing ones yeah. back onto us, which <laughs> then increases our classroom sizes, right. which then, you know, stresses resources, which are already stressed. We're not planned for right. this. Right. We're three months into the school year and we're getting this yeah. influx of charter school kids yeah. where if it's only 20, I don't see the issue. Yeah, that's not us. It's not true. And, and, and you know, I think, you know, Pia Durkin herself uh, would, said publicly so on several occasions, that's not what Alma does. You know, she, she's seen you know, other charters. You know, traction in other, bringing out her name. On, in well, well no, things. yeah, but, but I think, you know, but I think, you know, there's, she had no vested interest in, in I, I saying agree. that yeah. about us. Um, and I think Taylor can speak to the, the population that we serve and that we're not, uh, you know, in any way counseling out or kicking out the uh, quote-unquote bad yeah. kids, you know. Absolutely. My so, wife yelled at me. She said, you better not <laughs> say bad kids. And I said, those right, non-performing no ones. Right. Good yeah, for you. Well, <laughs> yeah, and I, I just want to say we don't believe that any child is not able to perform. Like, we come to this work every day thinking we just have to figure out in this building and with families and with scholars how we can get them on board with what we're trying to do, um, which families are. That's why they choose our school. Um, but how do we keep scholars motivated? How do we get them to push through the challenges that they may face? face in order to be academically successful at our school. Um, so we, like any school, face a lot of uh, populations that, you know, have different types of challenges. So we've got scholars who are spending a lot of time out of class because their behaviors are disruptive. We have scholars who are on the autism spectrum who have ADD and ADHD. We have scholars who have academic challenges like uh, language-based disabilities or um, we have a scholar who is hard of hearing. And so we are serving a wide array of populations here and we are also serving families who are from different places. There are some families who yes, have been so. here for years. Yeah, there are some people who, mm -hmm. you know, their grandparents are from Portugal and there are some people who just got here from wherever they're immigrating from. And so uh, we take everyone, like Will said, we have a lottery and it is random and we, we take everyone as they come with whatever strengths or challenges that they have and we just provide a lot of support. Um, and that being said, we have a really high demand at our school. So a, a kind of cornerstone of the work that we do is high demand, high support. Um, that's like a pillar of the work we do um, and a pillar of what we teach our teachers to do as well. And so when we see a scholar who is struggling, we don't say, how do we get them out of here? We say, what supports can we give them so that they can meet this really high demand that we have for them? So for scholars who are struggling to stay in class, are they distracted? Are they confused about the work? Is there an underlying condition that they have maybe that we don't know about? Do we need to send them to our partners at Mass General to get an educational evaluation for them? Maybe. Um, and so we explore all the options that we have at our disposal and luckily we are blessed to have lots of partners who can help us with that. So Mass General I just mentioned, we work with North Star Learning Centers, uh, we work with Meeting Street for occupational therapy and speech therapy and physical therapy. Excellent. Um, yeah, we have a lot of partnerships in the community and we definitely take advantage of that to the benefit of our scholars. So besides the partnerships, uh, 
you mentioned a lot of specialized yes. teaching. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, do you have the same requirements for your teachers that the city schools do as far as, you know, so many qualifications they got to they pass their, their testing right. and all that, you know, yeah. uh, to get into. There, there are, you know, I won't get into the, the, the weeds Is on that. I didn't want to get into the yeah, technicalities are, of what's qualified. There are different, lose 20 people. there are some different, uh, there, there are some places where there's fewer restrictions on charters as far as certification, but overall, you know, our teachers are, you know, we're a public school, our teachers are public school teachers. So your teachers could today qualify to teach at New Bedford, no man in middle school. The, the vast majority of them, I think there are some who are working towards certification okay, uh, while they're with us. Uh, but certainly, you know, our special education staff and, you know, uh, all of them, you know, have the, have the training they need. Um, but, you know, I think the beyond, standardization of teachers and I was students say, as well. Yeah. I hate standardization because each yeah. child's their own. Each and and Chris, their own. you know, as well as so, I do, that it's, it's not about it, it, like in any profession, it's it's not about those things. It's about how effective are they. And I think Absolutely. one of the strengths of and and look, this is not a, a conversation about you know charter schools and are charters good or are charters bad. There's terrible charter schools, right? And there's some great charter schools, just the same as any any district schools. And there's probably more variation because of that freedom. But I would say one of the uh, you know the great things about uh, the the chartering mechanism, that freedom that it provides, is uh, it gives you the freedom uh, to make sure that you can find the best possible people. And, and I don't care uh, where they come from, uh, you know, and, and I don't, I don't you know, care particularly what college they went to, things like that. What I care is when I put them in a classroom of kids who may come with a lot of the challenges that, that Taylor just spoke of, can they Perform. lead those mm -hmm. kids? Yeah, can they ignite them academically? Can they make sure that no matter what, no excuses, those kids get to where they need to be? Uh, and I think well, that's, I just, that's you know, the a lot of people factor. question whether or not you know yeah you're getting lower qualified teaching mm -hmm. right based on well I know, think I think the results speak for themselves absolutely. right and I'm, so I I'm think to me quality listening. teaching is about yeah. is about titles quality and, results titles and yeah. certifications yeah. to me don't mean a thing until I see what you do with them mm -hmm. that's right that's right and I met plenty of PhD doctors <laughs> that I'm like, oh my mm -hmm. goodness, and sure. I'm like, really? Okay, sure. right now. Yeah. Uh, a couple good questions. Yep. Um, heading back to the funding, mm -hmm. um, Scotty, let me just find it, right? Scotty Medeiros is always watching. Uh, yeah. If a child is removed Scotty. from the charter school and pl placed back into the public school, right? Uh, does the money follow that student or does it yes. still stay? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's another common myth that that you know somehow we kind of kick kids out, but 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 there's like a bundle of money that we keep for ourselves. So uh, no, we're, our funding is on a per pupil basis. So uh, the the money wherever the you know in in public schools wherever the children are, that's where the state is is funding, right? So the, what I'm saying is though, do you get the funding? I mean, we're talking in October. Have mm -hmm. you been paid for the year in September, or do you get paid monthly for each student? Like how does Explain, right. you know, because that's the right. question. Right. So we do get a, there is a, you know, monthly, so what is a monthly uh, you know, allotment from the state awarded on a per pupil basis. Um, there may be some lag time if a student leaves, you know, does the funding cut off that week? I don't know. But then they do prorate it later. So if, if we did continue getting funding for a week or two after a, a kid moved away, uh, then that would then be backed out of a Do you a fill that slot? On. What? Do you fill that slot? That's vacated yes. by that student. Yeah, so we would we would fill so immediately. The so there's spot. no net loss or gain, even if you were to keep it, because you're always trying to maintain. Right. Yeah, we would maintain so our enrollment. So instantly you well, have a wait, do you got, have a waiting list. Is well, that how look, it works? You know, when we've got 500 families on a waiting yes. list, yes. Uh, that we've got a lot of demand, and we know that each one of those names. I'm on answering that questions list. I kind of know the answer to, but yeah. I want them yeah. to understand what goes yes. on. Yeah. What do you think about the charter schools, man? Well, uh, Theo's on the waiting list. Yep. So we applied, 
Um, so I didn't get any favors from the, the election commissioner. <laughs> I had no one's pulling any favors. You wouldn't believe how many calls and, and letters yeah, I get. You I'm know? sure. Oh, and, man, that's Manny. <laughs> what, what you don't understand. I know. I'm breaking my first every, rule when that, Manny that's calls. Manny. <laughs> that's <laughs> Theo. You don't understand Theo. He didn't Theo's call. a star. Like, no, but and, and everybody we, knows I Theo. Would, I, yeah. I wouldn't take advantage of that. That's right. part of the process. Right. It's, it's, you know. And he'd be taking somebody else's Yeah, spot. exactly. So, I mean, we, we went through the process. You know, my wife is on top of all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, my brothers and I, we went to Catholic school our whole lives. Mm-hmm. But um, my wife went the public school route. And, um, you know, and she loved Carnegie Academy. So there was an opportunity to, to get him there mm-hmm. for, you know, full day preschool. So we're happy with that, too. That's so, great. I mean, but doing our due diligence as parents and caring about our child's education, mm-hmm. Alma was one of the schools that we looked at. So, I mean, and that Appreciate speaks vol- volumes for them as well. Yeah, thanks. Now, Michael has some yeah. contrarian points here that okay. I want to make sure he yeah. took the time to write them, so we're All here right. to Hi, answer questions. Um, bah, 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 bah. For some reason, my window on my comments is like this big now. Hmm. It takes two years for the funding to completely follow. As for the lottery system, a charter school can kick out a student for minor issues, whereas a public school is typically yeah. stuck with that student. Yeah. The no, other that's thing inc- that's incorrect. That hasn't been discussed are the students with special needs, blah, blah, yeah. blah, which we did go over. Um, and I know someone that wasn't even allowed to enter the lottery system because she required special services, where that's incorrect. as a public school cannot turn away that student. Yeah, so that's all incorrect, and I think, you know, because these kinds of charges have been leveled in the past, um, you know, often by special interests, uh, the department is, and, and we are particularly attuned to any of these kinds of issues, and, you know, we, we train our staff to be very open with everybody, uh, no matter what language someone speaks, no matter what their disability, we don't ask about disability status as part of the lottery. You and I went through the process earlier applying to the lottery. I didn't ask you about disability or gender or race or anything like that that, would be, that could potentially be discriminatory. Um, and so, you know, that's, the, you know, that's, that, unfortunately, that's untrue. Um, you know, I don't know where Mike got his information from, but, you know, that stuff tends to spread. Reach out. You yeah. have an email where Mike can, uh, <laughs> can, can send you a note. Yeah, honestly, because, yeah, you know, sure. if, we're here, if you're here to yeah. be accessed by the public to learn about your school, yeah, and, certainly. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll provide. And if you, you want some more info, yeah, I mean, info at Alma Del Mar. I feel horrible. Can I yeah. look at your notes? Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I was just going to say, if it's okay, I'd love to talk a little bit more about the services that we have for scholars. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. We're down to like 15 minutes, so I want to yeah. make sure that Manny gets right. in and you get in. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy absolutely. to address the funding. Well, you, you yeah. talk about the services. Yeah. I'll do the funding after. No, that. absolutely. We can, we can so, get back on, funding's so. boring. Yeah. So, as a part of the high demand, high support model, we need to have staff members who are trained to. Uh, provide the support that scholars need. And so we do a lot of training with our teachers. We have professional development every Thursday. Uh, We come back for three weeks before the school year starts to make sure we have curriculum in place. We want to make sure teachers know the scholars that they're going to be receiving. Mm -hmm. We give teachers the opportunity to read IEPs and 504s. We have scholars with special needs in every single grade of our school um, with all a different array of challenges that they are going to need to work on during the school year. And so in addition to the teachers in the classrooms, we also have math and literacy specialists uh, across the entire school. Um, And they are very familiar with the services that need to be provided to scholars who have IEPs and 504s, are checking in constantly with teachers to make sure that those services are being provided either by them or by the teacher themselves. Um, And then for out of classroom support, we have an entire culture team who's there to support scholars if they're struggling in class, if they need to come out of class, if they need to process a consequence, if they just need a break. Um, And all of those groups of people are communicating with families consistently to make sure that everyone's on the same page. Mm -hmm. Um, So on our culture team, we have myself, I'm the Dean of Culture, I kind of oversee the behavior management kind of stuff at school. Um, And then we have a behavior interventionist. Um, Wait a second, You're you're the bad cop too? Well, I don't like to think of it oh, as bad cop. See it. I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm a good cop. I'm, I'm, a good I'm cop. sitting here. I'm like, she's so pleasant to just talk to. Like I'm looking at her. I'm like, I'm in a better mood. I was yeah. in a bad mood coming in tonight. Kids are trying to get in trouble. I hang out with her for like three yeah. minutes. I'll be like, the heck she'll with the staff. The I'll te- just hang she'll with give you the teacher stare, and, and you'll you'll be so. You're. I'm, I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt. But. Yeah, no, not at all. And and that's. I mean, my job is the balance of the high demand, high support. I'm here to be a supportive 
person as we all are at Alma. Um, and I greet scholars at the door. I'm smiling. I'm encouraging. That's what the culture team does too. They're pushing in mm. scholars who we know we have challenges. We're saying, mm. Hey, it's going to be a great day today. Did you make sure you have everything you need for class? I'm going to come check in with you at 915 to see how your class went today. We're always, always encouraging scholars to be great, to be their best selves and to grow. Um, and there's a high demand too. When scholars aren't meeting our expectations, if we've given them the supports and they've made the wrong choice, hey, we need to come have a conversation. It's very, we take it very seriously mm -hmm. um, okay. because every single moment that scholars are in school is a moment that they can be learning and growing and we don't waste any time. And that includes all of our scholars with special needs or with diagnoses right. or with other maybe undiagnosed challenges. We, we treat all scholars as though they have the potential to be successful because they all do. We firmly believe that. Um, and if one scholar needs more support than the other, that's okay. We've you got treat them whole, as individuals. Yes, and we've got a whole team of people. We've got the teachers on the team, we've got the specialists, and we've got a socio-emotional specialist. We've got a counselor. We've got paraprofessionals. We've got so many people in the building. We're just a village trying which, to push scholars. What's your right student direction. to uh, teacher ratio? Uh, you know, I, I don't know off the, uh, top, off the top of my head, but it's, you know, s similar to a typical public school. So, well, uh, typical in New Bedford's 35 to 1 at this point. Are you close right, to Right, but that? that's not, that wouldn't be the published ratio that yeah. you saw online, right? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we, we have class sizes that range anywhere between, you know, 17, 18 with the little guys, K and 1, to uh, 25 or, or even more. Are you above 30 in some of your classes? Nope. No. So no. you're under 30 yeah. per teacher. Yeah. Right. Uh, but, you know, and, and talking about, you know, serving kids with disabilities, because I think that's a common myth, right, that, that we don't, you know, uh, take all comers. I think this is one I, I take particularly personal as, as a father of a kid with special needs. And, and I, I think that, um, you know, I'm just so proud of the work that Alma does with all of our scholars and especially with our kids that, you know, have, have disabilities and special needs and are English language learners. And I think, again, if you look at the results, that's the important part. What are we doing with those kids? Are we moving the needle with those kids? And I think if you look, our English language learners outperform not only their district peers, but their peers statewide, right? And every year we're closing the gaps between our English language learners, our kids with disabilities, our low income kids, uh, and our more affluent kids, and, and the rest of the population. And I think we're, that's what we're really focused on as a school. You know, hey, we're not perfect, right? Uh, you know, we've got plenty of room to grow. We still have gaps in the performance of, of our kids. And that's, that's, I think, what actually makes us successful is that every year we're looking at those weak spots and we're addressing them. Uh, and we've got plenty of work to do uh, without, you know, addressing kind of fictitious. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, one thing that's not fictitious, we're going to yep. go over numbers. Yeah. And the numbers. Oh, there's, there's plenty of fiction there, Chris. Well, I'm looking right at <laughs> uh, some stats provided. Yep. Uh, yep. The reimbursement to the city. Yes. Yes. Is a Let's huge do it. Gap. Let's do it. Uh, that's yeah. happening. We're talking $15 million in uh, a few years. In incorrect. Incorrect. Chapter 70 money. Yeah. So, so let's, let's talk about how that works. So uh, the money follows the child, right? So the, the state funds directly to the student. Uh, now, charters receive a little bit less than the district would receive in terms of that per pupil money from the state. Uh, they back out some costs. But let's just say for, for argument purposes, the money follows the child. So what that reimbursement is that you're referring to is to say if a child comes to a charter school uh, that uh, the state provides a soft landing, right? So the state's saying, you know what, uh, because there's going to be potentially an enrollment change in your district, we're going to give you the cost of educating that child uh, for the first year 100%. And then they're supposed to fund it the next five years at 25%. Now, people will tell you for the past few years, the state hasn't fully funded that. We've advocated for the state to fully fund that soft landing fund, right? But let's not confuse that with the idea that that state money follows the child. It's designated for that child. So the reimbursement is not supposed to equal the total cost of educating all the kids who are in charter schools. Uh, another another fact that's kind of interesting uh, since because the mayor's saying that he's got to of course, you know, of course he's got to cut back yeah, on yeah, yeah. Manny yeah I mean your right. budget's strapped yeah have you, has so, your so budgeting me, gone down at all in the past uh, couple of years there's no adding to it no adding yeah to it, yeah but people are getting so, raises in cost now, yeah also, so so Chris this let me is, just finish my yeah, point yeah, yeah. well uh, the 
I mean, you're asking to add two more schools now. That's right. There. That's right. And that's 1,100, 1,200 kids. Yep. And what I'm seeing here, quite mm-hmm. frankly, is that some of this money yep. that the city's getting for students, they're using it in other places, and now they're not allowed to. Is that is that what's happening? Is that the real story, or is, am I off? Uh, you know, I, I can't I can't go into the ins and outs of how, how the city might be spending their money. All, all I can speak to is is how the funding works. Uh, since 2008, say. Uh, uh, the district has uh, lost a net of, of 50 students, while charters have grown to serve over 1,000 students, about 1,175, I think, in, in, in uh, New Bedford. Okay? Net loss of 50 students. You follow me? Yeah. All right. Uh, well, I'm good charters numbers. have gained uh, uh, 1,175. Now, that reimbursement you were just talking about, that soft landing, the city has received $18 million mm-hmm. since 2008, in the past 10 years. So they've received $18 million. Yeah. They've lost about 50 kids. Uh, so, you know, when, when they're talking about the, the sky is going to fall, uh, if we don't receive that full reimbursement money, uh, you're actually talking about the gap in the reimbursement this past year uh, was less than 1% of the, the total school spending. In, uh, well, this is, the this, first, this is the first year yep. where we start losing. No. It starts to inc- increase... No, substantially no. Are you looking at a, 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 let me see your graph. I see it? It's, uh, it's probably comparing two, it's over. comparing apples and oranges, yeah. Chris. I, uh, I, I know the graph that you're probably I, looking at because I know, I know who's been pushing that out there. Yeah. Uh, and, and what that graph is showing is that per pupil rate that goes toward uh, kids who are educated in charter schools. The money follows the child, right? Uh, it makes sense that the state funding would go to the place that's educating the child, right? So that's what you're seeing go up there is if that enrollment increases, then that per pupil money from the state increases. Now that reimbursement was never supposed to be equal to that other line on that graph. That reimbursement is the soft landing for the district that's no longer serving those children, right? So there's a double payment going there. What they're trying to conflate in your mind is they're trying to tell you I'm not easily convinced. Yeah, I'm yeah. Listening to you, and I'm looking at that. Trust They're me, trying I'm... to tell you that, that that reimbursement should be equal to that, that other. Let me let me break it down in a different way. Uh, we have kids in our school right now who have been there for six or seven years. We've got a lot of kids who've been there five years or more. Yes. Right. Because you go. Okay, they left right. five mm-hmm. years ago. Okay. To to come to Alma. Right. They've they've been with us that long. Now, by that argument included in that fifteen million dollar figure is funding for those kids. So what they're telling you, Chris, is that they should be receiving funding for kids who left the district over five years ago. Now, I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm not the uh, world's best financial wizard, but that the, to me doesn't seem like uh, smart financial planning to say that you're still counting on money from kids who, who left town or, or who left a district uh, or left your school six years ago. But really, Chris, I think the important part to focus on, because a lot of this is to distract you away from the really important thing. Well, the real numbers are here, and it's released at Chapter 70 money. Yep. Uh, Yeah. On average, 12.6% of it is going directly to the charter schools. About about 4% uh, and 4% of the population, about 4% of the the total money. I I can send you the figures later. I I know whose figures you're looking at. Um, But but really, the the money argument is a a red herring, and what it's trying to distract you from is is what the real issue is, which is results. And this is not a zero-sum thing. I don't think money matters if the kids are getting better education. This is not not a zero-sum thing, Chris. You know, know, and, and I think Manny speaks perfectly to this point, that we're not, we're not the only great school in town. There are some great district schools. And in fact, there are plenty of other cities in this commonwealth that have thriving charter sectors, that have great charter schools. And alongside them, these are urban districts, alongside them you've seen the district improve dramatically at the same time. right? So we're not even near the charter cap in this city. And we have other cities that are already at that cap, that have been, pretty much all of them have in this, in this commonwealth. And yet, you've seen a thriving charter sector right alongside a district that's picking up the pace and, and doing a lot better. And I think, you know, I, I don't see it as a zero-sum thing. I actually think the name of the game in this city 
is not, you know, what do we do, you know, how do we make more charter schools or how do we make the district better? The name of the game, if you're a parent, is how do we create more great schools? Because he doesn't care whether his kids are in a charter school or in a district school or an innovation yeah, school or whatever heat. school. <laughs> so he wants to get I'm gonna put I'm gonna put words in a man's mouth, but but he wants I can assume he just wants a good school for his kids. What's right? your choice? What's the reason, Manny, that you have Theo on I mean I want the best education for my child. That's right. So Avery graduated from uh, Bishop Stang High School. Yeah. Um, before that he was at Nazarene Christian, before that he was at Keith Middle, before that he was at Kearney. Yeah. Um, and for the type of child that he was and the student he was, Stang was just a better fit for where he was at and sure. some circumstances in his life. And um, Nazarene was a fit for a little while. He needed that. We needed that as a family. And then Stang, I knew, um, coming from Nazarene Christian, it was a little bit bigger, but it wasn't, you know, New Bedford High School because Avery is a quiet, mm. really to himself kid, even though he's a great athlete. So I wanted him to get that exposure of athletics, being around different people, and then know he wanted to go on to college. So yeah. for him, Stang was a fit, just like it was for me when I was younger. My brothers ended up at New Bedford High School. Most of my friends in my neighborhood of the West End of New Bedford went to New Bedford High School. Um, That's a whole different episode. Yes. We can, we can but, for me, but for me, right. it, it, Stang was a fit. So for Theo, who's a different child, um, the Catholic school thing really wasn't a fit for us. We, we, we mm. talked about it. We discussed it. I had been there. You know, my wife went to public schools, and she, you know, really believed in the public school system. Mm. So we looked at a few. You know, it's about providing a child with the best right. that's there. So I, I have no – I applaud people for trying to think outside the box and offer mm. different things. And it's up for the parent and the family to decide what's best for their child, whether it's right. charter, whether it's public, whether it's private. Yeah. Everyone has their own reasoning yeah. as to why. And, and so why can't we make sure, you know, and I, I think that's the name of the game. How, how can we make sure in this city that we have as many great options as possible, right? And even if all, you know, even if we grow, right? So even if we grow a couple more campuses, we're still a drop in the bucket. We, we still know we're, we're a part of a larger uh, system and a larger solution that involves creating a, a great portfolio of schools that any parent is going to want to, you know, choose for their, their children. I, I think when we're talking about choice, the interesting thing is, uh, you know, some of the same people uh, who will tell you that uh, the, the families that we serve, who are often, uh, you know, low income living in New Bedford, uh, that, that they shouldn't have any choices, some of those same people exercise choice for, for their own kids and their own families. Absolutely. Uh, and all we're saying is that, uh, that, you know, every family deserves high quality options for their kids, of which we are just one. And I want to, you know, I want to shout out the great educators at Kearney, yeah. at Pachico School, Congdon. There's some really great urban public schools in this city, and we applaud them. We actually work with them. We're holding a, a, a workshop in a couple of weeks. We got a, a guy who wrote a great book on literacy that, that we all kind of like worship this guy. We invited district principals to come. Well, it's good that you're, yeah. you're trying to, you know, network with the, the yeah. public schools and, yeah. and just incorporate yourself because at some point, they're going to have to accept you, whether this mayor or this administration likes it or not. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to have, you know, Mayor Lang on, as right. I told Becca, and he, yeah. he's against the charter schools. We're going to hear his side of the story as yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, it's 8.04. I owe Manny a couple of minutes. Josh is going to punch me in the face. <laughs> and I'm going to go visit the school. We're going to come back at this because Anytime. Yeah, we'd love I may to have actually it. want to have – Mayor Lang said no. Yeah. That he didn't want to be – back and forth with you mm -hmm. when I spoke with him on the sure, farm. Sure, sure. But I really think that someone like him who can actually talk and debate and he's not a hothead at all and he's very articulate and he can, mm -hmm. he's, a good, he's a good man, mm -hmm. would be able to open up more what the differences are in this whole funding mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. between the two of you. Uh, and you know, you and I would just, right. I understood what you were saying, but some of the viewers may not get right. it without having the opposing view yeah. coming in. And I think the important thing is, that, you know, I think we want to keep Going back to the bottom line is results. I'm what with are the results? What Manny right? just said. Yeah. He put a bow on yeah. your on your package. Yeah, Honestly, I think that's what it's all about. And uh, and I'm glad I, I brought him in getting? on this. And you should just be be thankful that he came on because everybody, <laughs> everybody, <laughs> everybody listens to Manny. Anytime Manny, I get to be in the room with Manny, I'm thankful. Everybody listens to Manny. <laughs> yeah. Manny, uh, I really wanted to talk to you about give you a couple of minutes to gloat uh, about your new. 
503 C? Yeah, 501C3. 501C3. I always butcher that. Yeah. I'm good with numbers, just not numbers and letters mixed. <laughs> no, um, no gloating. You know, it's just hard work, just passionate about the kids, just like, you know, they are. Um, so I, I'm kind of proud to be on the same panel with them, you know what I mean? Because, you know, you got to think outside the box. Mm -hmm. These kids need options. They need, need alternatives. I've been involved forever as you know we've done a bunch of stuff together congrats on the cuts for kids that was amazing yeah. sadly i couldn't be um part of that it was amazing a, a how everybody's yeah, saying congratulations to me and there was like 90 people this is like my hair oh, yeah. this is how i cut my hair <laughs> i bought a couple backpacks yeah and that's it. I don't cook pizza. I don't spin music. Yeah. I don't cut hair. But there's a lot to you be said about facilitating. Like you in this. Yeah. Yeah. In this there's world, a lot to man. there's a lot to say about facilitating and bringing people together because yeah. it, it's very Thank Thank difficult you. to do, especially in the city. Um, in a lot of respects, I'm I'm meeting more people. We're trying to Absolutely. be that, and you know, my program, like you know, we started the A's Before J's, rewarding kids for doing well in school, um, through apparel and. We've grown and morphed into, we just got our nonprofit um, and we run a mentoring program. So kind of like a mentoring network, middle school and elementary kids paired up with high, high school kids who we pair up with college kids. Hopefully down the line, those guys come and work for us, which I'd is like amazing. I'd when these, when, you know, you're going to let me know and, you know, we're going to work something out with the superintendent. Uh, where Definitely. I can get in and, and witness these lunches with yeah, the kids and I show... Mean, the interaction between schools because I think it's something that will benefit even people exactly. like Will in the charter school. And I'll and talk to these guys and, and you know, we, because they need to invite us in and it's something yeah. positive. It doesn't cost anybody anything. So yeah, we've come right. up with these things that no cost because we haven't had any money because we didn't have our status. Um, and then Best things in life are free, brother. Exactly. I mean, we're just showing the love. Um, we also have a program the cops, kids, and community, where a couple of That's officers excellent. are going to come in and take kids from each of the middle schools, get them off campus where there's not that territorial gang stuff, mm -hmm. put them in a room, um, teach them some basketball, mentor them a little bit, find some common ground, bring, build a relationship with the police officers. That's something else that we're bringing to the schools. Um, that's so important. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in order to keep bringing these types of programs, um, you know, we are going to stop funding and try to get funded we want to be fully funded because i want to be able to walk into school and say hey you have a need you have children we have this idea maybe this fits if not this idea and then say you know don't worry about paying us because we're fully funded ourselves so miss taylor right here has got a couple ins on some of these partnerships i'm, I'm sure <laughs> so yeah, we would love to open up yeah partnership. so yes. yeah. i mean it, it's really important to give these these kids options mm -hmm. show them there's other things and it takes people that think outside the box um you know i just try to be as creative as possible Chris knows people call me. They have an idea. They have a partnership, and then I run with it. They don't need you to give you to give you ideas. No. You're like an idea no. machine. You're like, <laughs> so, you're but like it, an inventor. Of it, it, and it's all about the passion that I have for for the city, mm -hmm. one, the community, um, and the children because they are the future. Um, they're going to build. It, um, if you can plant it, seeds now, it's going to make me when I can't walk and I can't do my own thing. Yeah. help and you know they'll be able to guide yeah, my exactly. kids too. Exactly, and, and that's why I'm so passionate about it. And that's why you know sometimes being the election commissioner, I love my city. So when you hear you know some people dogging or saying this didn't work, you know I I do take it personal because I invest wow. everything I have into the city, um, into the youth, and give back because you know it's about building the community making New Bedford a better place. It is a beautiful place. There's so many talented people everywhere in the city just spotlighting that. I mean, we've done how many programs already and, and met oh, some amazing... Next, next week, you'll be, you'll be hearing about... The, yeah. You'll be involved in the next one. And, and I want to be involved in all of, of it. Of course. So, yeah. I mean, I know I can't. Like you said, you've got to rein me in sometimes. Be, but, again, it, whatever benefits the youth of the city and benefits the city in the long run... And that's run, what it sounds like these for. charter schools are here to do. Yeah, um, I mean, that's definitely. our mission. Our mission is to turn out people like this, right? I mean, if we can have graduate more kids who, who grow up to be service-minded leaders that's what it's all about see people see manny and i and this is what i love about him and yeah. he's real he'll say, he'll come right here and get yeah. on the set and i'll do the same i'll lay him out my laundry he'll air out his and we've you know we do a lot mm -hmm. and i don't mind saying it mm -hmm. it's good to like once in a while you yeah. know wave your championship banner around there you go we do a lot but manny and i have been through some dirt we've been in the gutter mm -hmm. and you know it always hasn't been this right i did a little 
spiel a couple weeks back that we are all broken, and we truly are all broken. Mm -hmm. Every single one of us. Oh, you know, you know what I mean? She's going to go home and she's going to fight pain tonight. You're going to go home. You're going to fight pain tonight. Mm -hmm. I've been fighting pain all damn day. I, got, I have a four Manny year has it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not just talking that about you. Pain. That's that's extra. Yeah. yeah. I'm talking about <laughs> inside here. Oh, yeah. We all have oh, yeah. our demons that we deal with. And we all have to get past that and grow. You know what I mean? And guys like Manny, yeah, you are turning him out. And, you know, people like him and I who have been through some crap, you know, mm -hmm. you want kids to be exposed to that. You right. want children to see... This guy, with lack of a better word, was an idiot 10 years ago. Mm. Or this guy was bedridden. Mm -hmm. You know, looked at by some as a loser. Like, you know what I mean? And now look at these guys. These are leaders in the community. And you want yeah. kids to be inspired by this. Right. You know, mm -hmm. right. you want kids to see, like, oh, I was picked on in school. Right. You know, but look at me now. Like, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm coming up and I'm making sure, not me personally, but there are those who, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. that are now leading. And they came from a different place and they've been through the trash and they've been through it all and they've grown guys like Manny and I and it doesn't matter even though my old logo Look just looks like, like just like you we're two different <laughs> men you know pull in the politics part right now which is crazy in this country it's like five percent of all of us but yet we all hate each other because of who we voted for <laughs> and uh, the big guy right there Josh already gave me 11 minutes and I'm not taking advantage of him uh, I'll give you guys each Thanks, a quick 20 seconds maybe you can Throw yeah. something down in that scribble. I looked yeah. at her. Notice how I grabbed her notes because I didn't even want no, to touch it. From here, I noticed. I've got chicken scratch. <laughs> no, I, you know, I just th thank you for the opportunity to be on here. It's oh, this ain't over. I'm going to have you guys back on. I'm okay. going to talk, gonna talk right. to Mayor Lang again because I okay. want to see right. if he'll actually. Because okay. a healthy debate is yeah. when mm -hmm. actually people truly do learn. Mm -hmm. It's easy to be one sided and to sure. have. Sure. I'm not confrontational. Yeah, I hear you. I didn't want to sit here and say, well, this yeah, says differently. Yeah, yeah. So I want two people who actually have. A right. horse in the race to actually discuss this and right. show people. Yeah, and I, you know, I just think you know, it's it's an honor to be here with with Manny. I'm excited about stop by every the, Thursday. The He's probably here. <laughs> getting getting Manny in the same room with with mm -hmm. Taylor. Mm -hmm. There are going to be wait. good things that happen uh, for for kids at Alma and for kids everywhere in New Bedford. Uh, and you know, and I'm just excited about the opportunity that that we have to continue the work that we're doing and potentially to serve more families. Uh, and to be part of, again, this isn't a zero-sum thing, to be part of the renaissance that we know that's coming for this, this city uh, and, and the turnaround in the schools. And if we can graduate even more well-prepared eighth graders every year, when we grow, you know, if we have 100, 150 kids coming out, um, those kids are, are going to go to New Bedford High. Those kids are going to go to, New, you know, uh, the Voc Tech. They're going to do great things. And so it's not just about serving the families that we're serving. It's about being a partner in, with the district in this work and about uh, you know, really improving the life trajectories of kids everywhere and, and making sure we've got more leaders like Manny when, when my kids get older. A leader he is. Yeah. Yeah. Ms. Taylor. Yeah. I oh. just want to echo everything Will said and also mention that it's, just, it's not just you and me, Will. Right. Every single member of the Alma community really fiercely believes they're that all they in bring something Ooh, amazing yeah. to new bedford wait till and you see it yeah yeah oh, i'm Please definitely i want to go by Please i'll go by I'll, yeah. I'll have the time maybe even next week where i can mm -hmm. stop in and really just yeah you know take a look at what's going yeah, on absolutely there. my office have, is right on the first just email floor. me your cory form i'm all coried out so <laughs> i just filled <laughs> another one out singing, for soccer just follow so. it oh, yeah. around the corner oh yeah you'll definitely hear some singing yeah. Come around, you know, eight fifteen. <laughs> and I want to, I want to see it. I really do. Yeah. I'm really curious to see the difference. Yeah. yeah. Manny, what you got? If anybody's inspired by the things that I I do in the community, um, like the programs that we're about, any little bit helps. Again, we want to be fully funded. Five, ten, fifteen, fifty, whatever. If you're a business that wants to be part of um, the stuff that we're doing, and and you know that, you know, donating ten dollars to achievements by four. Um, you're going to get 20 back in the community because we're going to get out there and put the effort out and we're actually going to put use into you know what you give us um, visit our, our webpage we'll www.achievementsby4.org there's pictures with me and the kids and you know we describe our programs and, and it's a good way that you can get on there and volunteer as well um, find out more about us email me stop by city hall if you have questions about the election stop my door is open 
come look at the machines. Come check out, you know, he how we do lunch things. lunch downtown, too. Yeah, Anybody nice lunch want? downtown. The the baker is there, you know, no problemo. <laughs> Just come visit. Like, my door is open. Um, if you have questions, if you think something shady happened behind the scenes, call me and ask me. I, like you said, I'm an open book. I really have nothing to hide. Um, my life is, is out there um, because I know that I'm in a position where I do inspire people and I do show people that, you know, you can be knocked down and get yourself back up or come from you know, a poor environment or immigrants or whatever it may be and still be successful. Um, I look like a lot of the kids that are in these schools. Mm -hmm. So they look at me and say, hey, you know, there could be one that I want to be that guy. Mm -hmm. You know, you never know. America is great. We all have the opportunity to grow and it depends on you. Uh, the person within and the person grooming these children. Uh, you have decisions to make where you're going to send your children to school. You have decisions to make how you're going to discipline your children at school. I mean, at home, you have decisions to make how you're going to raise them in your home and how you're going to let them speak to you and how all this, you know, who you're going to let in their lives, the mannies, the guys like me who want to come around and help out in your neighborhood. You have this power as a parent to grow your children. You have this power as a parent to show them the right way. And you have this power as a parent in this country to enter the Alma Del Mar lotto, to get in touch with Manny and do the three on three with the cops, you know, and, and, achievement by fours and, and doing all the stuff that we have out here. We have people in this great country that are still putting their heart and soul into the local community. Forget about all this craziness nationally. I've kind of turned away from that. I still poke because I like to actually troll some people because they're so <laughs> crazy about national politics. But honestly, you want to make a difference in life, start in your own house. Don't worry about the, the king of the country. Worry about the king of your house and help your children grow and make the proper decisions daily that will make them a good citizen in the future of this country. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, I love being on tonight. I was, a little, uh, I was in a bad mood coming on tonight. Uh, I took my wife's laptop. I lost my power cord and uh, threw my whole day off. But great guests. Good friends, made it all happen. Thank you, Josh, 17 minutes. I'm out. Have a good night. Football.